Whenever I get bored, I love to look through all of my old sketchbooks. I've acquired a lot of them and I haven't looked through them in like two-ish years maybe, so I've forgotten a lot of what's in here. In these 20-ish books, I have documented how I learned how to paint. All of the cancelled celebrity portraits, all of the depressive journaling, and maybe even a lime lips or two. They're all in here. And I want to bring you along. So I think that we should start out with these numbered sketchbooks. I got through about eight of them before I decided to quit and I think that they're all finished front to back. I got this sketchbook for my 14th birthday and this was kind of my brand for a while because I loved Graveyard Girl. I got this whole thing done in like two months apparently so I guess we should just get started. I started out with like a little Winsor & Newton watercolor set and it was so much fun. Don't do this. Just like I watched so many sketchbook tours on YouTube that I felt so much pressure to like make my first page perfect and when it wasn't I had the need to tell people that my work was trash. If you tell people that your artwork is trash like they're gonna believe you. I spelled galaxy wrong. This is where I documented my initial obsession with an artist named Tillith. I think that you're supposed to create a figure around the armature figurines not just draw the armature but I didn't know that. Oh we are traveling a little bit close to Lime Lips territory already. I think I was in 8th or ninth grade here and I remember I would leave my sketchbook on my desk and wait for people to ask me to look through it and then when they actually asked to look through it, I'd like begrudgingly slide it over and be like, don't judge me. And then when they told me that they liked a page, I was like, that's actually my least favorite page, I did it in like 7 minutes. Literally shut up. Oh, my sister did this. I can see that there's a person under here. I painted over it because apparently it wasn't good enough. And that is literally so lame. Don't do this. Like you're gonna be 20 years old one day and you're gonna be looking through your old sketchbooks and you're gonna wanna see all of your old paintings, not just the good ones. I love how I dated all of my old pieces. So you can see this was Christmas Eve. And then Christmas day, I think I made like four pieces. Yeah, this was, I, I did all three of these on Christmas day. That's crazy. I really miss the days when I could- See! Like, that's so irritating. I really miss the days when I could- Oh! Looking at the dates on all these, it's like, I was working in this sketchbook every single day, and it's so cool to see, like, how much I was just in love with working on this sketchbook. I think that more than any other period in my life, like, this sketchbook was the happiest I've ever been painting. You see, I'm so sentimental, like that's stupid. I had to devote a whole page to my sketchbook being like, ah, and it's done now. Like, calm down. I loved working on this. By the way, you're probably gonna see my dead name in this video. Tails is a chosen name. Like, my parents didn't name me that. I'm not binary, I use they, them pronouns. Um, if you choose to respect that, thank you. Um, this one's a little bit bigger, so it took me a couple more months to complete. Oh, th this isn't the first. This was a, I tore this out from, I think like my fifth sketchbook or something. Ooh. <laughs> I remember, oh my god, I painted this on vacation with my family, and at this point I didn't even know I was gay yet, and my mom pulled me aside and she was like, hey, so I saw your painting, are you like trying to say, are you gay? And I was like, no, I just want to like, I like freshly decided that like gay people deserve rights, and I devoted this painting to it, so that's pretty awesome. But it is kind of crazy that I painted this and I was like, I'm not gay. <laughs> I painted this at the beach and you could feel the sand in the paint and I just love that. Oh, <laughs> there's, there's Graveyard Girl, Work Diva. This is my first time using actual oil paint and I didn't know to prime the paper, so yeah, it, you can see like... I love this painting when I made it. I featured this painting in a video on this channel called Tier List of My Paintings. That video is so fierce, you should watch it after this one. I did like a self-critique of all of my old pieces and it was really insightful, I think. Oh, <laughs> this is Joey Crisepa work. We're getting into celebrity portraits, folks. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna go ahead and be Gabby Hanna once again. I feel like I'm outing myself today. Like, I'm choosing to be very vulnerable on the internet and I hope that you respect that. 
Almost every single painting I made at the end of the sketchbook, I was like, ooh, that one's my new favorite. I was feeling a lot of growth in my work at the time. Oh my god! This was the first time that I ever put in research on how to mix colors properly. That was the most important thing I ever did for my artistic growth. Ooh, my sassy sketchbook 3.0 featuring a failed Inktober. I can't wait to look at that. You see, I taught myself how to mix colors accurately, and my paintings just took like a huge leap in terms of how good they were. I painted some rocks, so that's pretty cool. I love some of these textures in here. Stop! I feel like I'm really outing myself as an adult Potterhead. I love Harry Potter so much, but I was talking to my friend Simon the other day, and I asked him, like, what's worse, an adult Potterhead or an adult Star Wars fan? And he was like, oh, adult Potterhead. That's crazy to me. Oh, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for Inktober? This was the last time I ever followed the official prompt list because I think that the official creator of Inktober basically ripped off an entire drawing book from a black creator. So if you choose to partake in all the festivities of Inktober, don't follow the official prompt list. Create your own prompt list or follow a smaller creator's. Guys, a sketchbook is a place to figure out what you want to create. And you know what? I'm happy I was, um, doing that. There's so much Harry Potter bullshit in these sketchbooks, that's kind of embarrassing. Oh my god! <laughs> like, what, like, what more do you want from me? Like, I, I'm burying my soul on the internet, and you're gonna look at me like that? Like, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve it. Like, I'm only human, I'm only gay on the internet in 2018. Like, what more do you want from me? I'm finding a lot of the most interesting pages, not the ones that are the most accomplished in terms of how they're rendered, but the ones that I'm exploring the most interesting ideas. But already, in three sketchbooks in just over a year, there is like, that's kind of crazy. Like, there's so much growth. <laughs> there are very little original paintings. Like, I stole this from another artist. I love looking back at pages like this because there's like real memories attached to it, you know? I think this is the first time that I'm seeing me incorporate the palette on my painting and I just did this in my last painting. So like these ideas that I'm exploring in 2018, I'm still using today. I loved doing redraws back when I was working on these sketchbooks. That is what, two years apart? Some of my favorite pages are where I'm exploring media really interestingly. I think that this is crackle paste on top of ink, and I really love what happens when you put like an acrylic based medium on top of ink. It like bleeds through and it looks really interesting. We're now getting to the point in my sketchbooks where a lot of the pages are missing. As you can see, in all of my old sketchbooks, if I wanted to make a piece of artwork, I would put it in my sketchbook. And when I scored my senior show with the gallery, I needed to take the paintings out of my sketchbooks and put it on display. So I looked through all of my old sketchbooks and I tore out all of the pages that I enjoyed the most. I would love it if I could look back at all of my old sketchbooks and see them in their like original, completed, authentic format. But I think it's worth it because I got to like show my work in a gallery. Like that's really cool. We have finally given up the branding. We are now on just six. And this one, I remember this one quite a bit, actually. This was the beginning of COVID. <laughs> Guys, like, I'm only human. Like, what can I say? Like, I'm only human. Stop. I'm often finding the left pages of my sketchbook to be a little bit more interesting now. Like, that's where I figured out all of my ideas. And then on the right, I would do my more ambitious stuff. I think we're seeing like a big transition now when I started using a lot more 
muted colors in my artwork. Like, I was obsessed with the artist Tilith for years, and that was dominating the color palettes that I was using. I love this page. This page is so fierce. Oh, I think that these are all my favorite artists at that time. That's crazy. This painting is really cool. I like, I, this is something kind of interesting. I painted this from a reference. I was ripsticking around my neighborhood at like really early lockdown and I was so excited that I was ripsticking that I FaceTimed my friends. And I took this screenshot while I was on the FaceTime and I painted it and I think that the colors and like this little like hatching thing that I did over here, like that's so cool. I used like a brown underpainting and I put blue paint on top and I scraped it away with like a dead micron pen and I just think it's really interesting. Oh my god, I tried to make some ink out of flowers that I found outside and it just turned out to this like brown color, but that was really fun. And this was a color study of a painting that I later made called Fatima. I really don't have any memory of making this sketchbook, by the way. Like, I don't remember making it, so I have no idea what we're going into. Oh, a $30 reward really turning out the pockets if I lost this one. Uh, oh my god, you can see me. This was when I was trying to figure out my new signature because I knew I was non-binary, but I hadn't figured out my new name yet. So I wanted to make my signature more of a symbol. I figured it out right there. That's so cool. I love some of the stuff I'm doing down here. I think that this is like tarnished gold leaf with like a white wash on top of it. That's really cool. Do I belong? Sweet Christ. And this is a sketch for a painting that I later made called Shower. This later became a painting called Collaboration Project where I had my entire class of English students paint on my painting. It was really cool. There's an empty page. I did not finish the sketchbook. That's crazy. And there's some recipe notes to cap off this sketchbook. That's fierce. And this is the last of my numbered sketchbooks. I had to make this for a class I took in high school, like my junior or senior year. They offered us a bunch of really old books that were just falling apart and just told us to like paint the cover and now this is our sketchbook. And like, don't do this. If you're gonna invest your time into a sketchbook, you want something that's a little bit more archival. And this one is like really falling apart. It's because I tore out a lot of pages from this sketchbook when I was sourcing my senior show and it just like really destroyed a lot of the binding. <gasps> this was a little sequin from my first homecoming. This sketchbook really is just falling apart. Like, that's so fierce. It's been a tough winter, dead of winter, exhausted, burnt out. I feel stupid. Oh my God, I was, whoa. And that's the last of my numbered sketchbooks. After I quit eight, there's probably been less than 10 instances in my life where I was like, ooh, I wanna paint a page in my sketchbook. And then like I went out and just like opened my sketchbook and painted the page. I was just burnt out and I didn't like doing that anymore. After this, my relationships with sketchbooks really changed. I started doing all of my completed artwork out of the sketchbook and sketchbooks became a place for me to plan the larger pieces that I wanted to focus on. I see a couple sketchbooks here that I don't remember at all. Um, this video is no longer going to be chronological. I hope that you consider that just a whimsical storytelling device. Oh. <laughs> oh, and that's it. Oh, this is lovely. I made this um, a couple months ago, actually. I went glamping with my sisters and I painted at the beach and I really love a lot of these shapes, actually. This is so cool. Honestly, I love working from life and I need, oh, and we're done. This one is really old. That is Maddie Ziegler. <laughs> Oh, we have some Billy. I guys, I was emo. Stop. And that one's done too. Okay. Oh. What the hell is that? I did not make that. Oh, this page is really cool. Oh, I made this in college. This is a study of like an older mosaic or painting or something. Okay, this one's on Bristol paper. Bristol paper sucks. It's like really smooth. Don't get Bristol paper. This was like 2019 maybe, 2018. Oh, and we're done again. Okay, so it looks like I don't have much perseverance in these sketchbooks. Oh, this is lovely. I brought this sketchbook glamping with me two years ago now, and I was trying to sketch like Seurat. My concepts of sketching now were a lot more tonal rather than using lines. So I really like sketching like this. That's gonna be some Sudoku notes. And we're done, okay. 
Oh, this was when I did some life drawing. I was booked by college to do a commission and for some reason I went into their chemistry classroom and I did some life drawing to get practice for this commission or something and I brought this sketchbook with me. I like these like vectors out of the eye. I don't do life drawing ever, so it was like really odd for me to be in this classroom being like, yeah, I'm an artist and like I'm supposed to be making impressive drawings and I just wasn't able to. Is there, oh. <laughs> Wait, this is so confusing. This is the last of the sketchbooks that I don't remember at all and it's, <laughs> oh, some more Sudoku notes. Here I was doing some preparatory drawings for a painting I made called Sorry I Can't Match. This was gonna be the original figure. Thank God I decided to not do that. And that was, okay. Next I think that we should do these two sketchbooks that I had at college for my drawing one class. These drawings are mixed up. I think that most of them are dated. The semester was split into two parts, one where we were focusing on line and one where we were focusing on value. I far preferred the second part of the semester. This was my first time working from life and I had so much fun. But I do remember we were forced to draw the still life in the center of the room, but I was always far more interested in drawing the people rather than the still life. So I'd get the still life done as quickly as possible so that I could move on to the people. I love this class so much. It was at 8 a.m., which was fine for me actually. I love starting my day that way and I'd get out of that class at like 11 and I'd have like three drawings out of me. I think this was my favorite drawing that I made over the entire class. We were tasked with doing the still life, but I decided to back way up and paint the entire room. This was when we were doing like a reductive method of mark making, so you'd cover the entire page with charcoal and then you'd use your eraser to carve out the forms. And I think that this is just so charming. I love this drawing. This is the thicker paper that we used when we had to do a little bit more intensive drawing. Oh, and I made this when I, I went on an art date with one of my friends, we went to a park. This was after college, but I loved working on this with them. And I think that these are the most filled of my miscellaneous sketchbooks. I guess we can start with this one. This was yet another sketchbook that we had to make in high school. I think that this is my favorite cover that I've done. This is a photo of me going like this. Some of these drawings were for my ceramics class, but I continued using the sketchbook because the paper was so nice. We had to do a drawing a week. This is one of my favorite pages of any of the sketchbooks I have today. I mixed in a purple ink with some gold acrylic paint. I think this looks so cool, especially the way that it reflects. I love doing portraits from observation in a mirror. Here's preparation for my painting sinking. And this is really how I use my sketchbooks now. They are just a place for me to thumbnail and get my ideas out for a painting. This was all preparation for a painting I made called In My Own World Again. I did font on the left side of the painting and this was me like figuring out the font. I think that these look so cool. And then this was my final thumbnail sketch for my Christmas painting. It has a really long, obnoxious name. Th this is stock count of my prints. I make prints, you guys should buy them. And this was, I was preparing the font that I was gonna use for the numbers in my painting one through 100. And here in my one through 100 painting, I got halfway through the painting. I was reconstructing a Dia and I wanted to completely rip out how I originally painted her. Some of these sketches are really, this is really engaging. Like I love the way that I designed this. And that's the end of this sketchbook. I still grab it occasionally, so I think I'm gonna probably fill it all the way up. And last but not least, this is kind of my go-to right now. This is where I've been doing all of my planning. Here I was getting my idea sorted for my painting Tristan when I wanted to create like a circular painting with a lot of motion. I think that this sketch is really compelling, this one not so much. And this is the final thumbnail I made of my painting sinking. As you can see, I oftentimes do my thumbnail sketching like at an angle by accident, but I just crop it with my pencil. With this one, it was so bad that I had to like, yeah. <laughs> There was a community drawathon at MSU with a bunch of live figures. Oh, this was an alternate composition for my painting Geraldine. I kind of like this composition actually. When I got booked for my commission about a year ago, this was the first idea that I really liked actually. I wanted to combine my use of halos with a Lewis structure because I was doing the painting for the chemistry department. And this is thumbnails of the actual reference photos that I ended up using. Here's some preparation for my painting 1 through 100. And oh my gosh, this was um, one of the thumbnails for my last painting, Jasmine. I actually really like this thumbnail and I think I should have spent a little bit more time with it. I did two color studies of Jasmine. The first one I did with no lighting on my bed. And then the next day I went to my desk. And if you can see like, if you set yourself up properly, you're gonna create a little bit more accurate drawings. 
I made this just a couple of weeks ago when I went camping this year. This I did with no reference. This was like the first time in a very, very long time where I was like, ooh, let me do something in my sketchbook and I made this. Oh, and here's some sketching for my newest painting that I'm working on. It's gonna be like a reimagining of sinking. I, mm, I guess I'll show you. But yeah, I've been filming this process and I've been really enjoying working on this painting and I can't wait to show you guys more. I think that that is every single page of every single sketchbook that I've ever worked on. I really loved looking through my old sketchbooks and it's kind of inspiring me to maybe begin a new one. I haven't been actively working on a new sketchbook in about three years and it just makes me wonder how much better it could be now that I think I'm a much better artist. Anyway, I personally believe that you should like this video, subscribe to this channel, and comment the timestamp of your favorite page. With that, I will see you all again very soon.